Hello everyone. In this video, I'll show how to configure header rewrites in Azure Application Gateway. So let's start with the introduction of what are HTTP headers. They are the components of HTTP messages which are exchanged between the client. So the client can be web browser or a command terminal like curl or load balancer. They provide additional information about the request and the response which are provided by HTTP messages along with the type of content which is being sent in those messages. There are two types of HTTP headers. One is request header and the another one is response header. As you can see on your screen, the request header are the components of HTTP messages which are received from the browser to the application gateway. And the response header are the components which are being sent as a response from application gateway itself. So in application gateway, header rewriting is the ability to modify the HTTP headers of request and response when they pass through the gateway. And using this feature, application gateway can add, remove, modify the headers to meet the specific requirements or enhance the security of your web application. So let's check this in lab and configure header rewrite in application. I have pre-created the resources in the lab to support the header rewrite. First, I have created a web application in Azure App Service using the ASP.NET. And afterwards, this web app is added into the backend pool of Azure Application Gateway. If we'll go to the Application Gateway, there is one Application Gateway which is created with the name AGW Dev 001. And in the backend pool, the app service is added, as you can see here. The configuration of the application gateway is that the communication between the browser and the application gateway is secured using let's encrypt CA signed certificate. However, the connection between application gateway and the app service is using HTTP protocol, which is port 80. And I'm using the custom domain shalender.online, which is mapped to the front end IP of application gateway. So let's open shalender.online. And this is the sample ASP.NET web application which is created. So let's check the HTTP headers of this web page. Right click, go to the inspect, click on network, reload the page and click on the URL. And you can see response headers and request headers. Request headers are the components which are received from the browser and response headers are the components of the message which are sent from application gateway. So by looking at the response header, anyone will know that I'm using Microsoft IIS and in the backend, it's only HTTP protocol. As I mentioned, the connection between application gateway and Azure app service is only HTTP and it's using the domain shalender.azurewebsites.net. So to hide this information, we'll rewrite the header rules in application gateway. Let's go to application gateway. Go to rewrites, rewrite set, create a new one. Let's name it as web app rewrites. And let's associate it to the routing rule, which we have next add a rewrite rule. First, let's name it as server because we want to remove the server information. Let's give the rule number as 100. Click on the configuration for this action. It's from the response header. Delete. Let's look for server. Okay. Create. Let's wait for the application gateway to save these changes. Changes are saved now. Let's go to our website again and refresh. Click on the URL. And now you'll not see the server in the response header. Let's do the same thing with the set cookie because set cookie is providing a lot of crucial information which should not be available for everyone. Let's go to application gateway again, rewrites. And we'll go to the same rewrite rule and add a new rule. Let's name it as cookie. Give it as 110 response header, delete and set cookie.
and we'll update the rules now. So the changes are saved in application gateway. Let's go back to the web page, refresh the page, click on the URL and in the response header, now there is no server and no set cookie. So till now we have learned how to delete the entries from HTTP header. So now let's check whether we need any security headers to be added in the response header. Let's go to securityheader.com and look for our website. Copy this link, type it here and scan. And now it's showing that there are multiple headers like strict transport security, content security policy, X content type options, which are missing from our response headers. But in this video, I'll show few options and how to change them. So the strict transport security also called as HSTS is a web security policy mechanism that helps you to protect the websites again, man in the middle attack. So when a web server send this header to the user browser, it informs the browser that it should only connect to the website over HTTPS connection for a certain period of time. As you can see here, strict transport security, maximum age, this is equal to 365 days and include subdomains means that the policy should apply to all the subdomains of the current domain. So let's create this header into the rewrites. Go to the application gateway. We'll use the same rewrite rule. Next, add a new one. Let's name it as HSTS 120. Configure the action response header and we are setting it up. Let's look for strict transport security and the header value will be which we have copied maximum age of 365 days and include the subdomain. Okay. And update. Once the changes are saved in application gateway, we'll check the website. Let's go to our website, refresh the page. And in the response header, you can see the strict transport security header is there. Let's go back to the securityheader.com and scan the website again and see if anything has changed now. And perfect. As you can see, strict transport security header is configured properly. Let's set up X frame options. So this is an important security header to prevent click jacking attacks where an attacker could overlay a malicious page over your website page and it can trick the users to use their malicious page and the value of same origin. As you can see, we should apply for same origin. It means that the frames to be displayed should come from the same domain itself. So let's copy this option. Go to the rewrites. Next. Add a new rewrite rule, X frame 140 and let's configure this response header set X frame options and let's copy same origin. Update the application gateway and now let's check the changes into the website. Refresh the page. Click on the URL and X frame option, same origin is, is now part of our response header. Let's scan the page again. And now two security headers are acting perfectly. Let's make a last change to X content type options. And this is an HTTP response header that helps protect against MIME attack, which is sniffing vulnerabilities. So MIME full form is multi-purpose internet mail extension and it is also called as content type sniffing. Once we'll set up the value as no sniff, then this header informs the web browser to only trust the dedicated content type and don't change the content type into the browser. Let's copy this. Go to rewrite rules. Next, create a new rewrite rule. X content. 150 click to configure response header if you can't find this option instead of the common headers let's click on custom header copy this and copy the value too update 
update. Now let's go back to the website and see if the new header is available or not. And you can see no sniff option, X content type options is available. And we'll scan our website again. Now previously it was showing red, now it's showing yellow. We have to still add these security headers, but for this lab, this is enough. And now our website is partially secure. So to summarize this video, header rewriting is the ability to modify the HTTP headers so that the specific requirement can be met and the security of the web application can be enhanced. So that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.